Tales of the Jedi is a tale of two visions, a series of shorts that follow the perspective of two characters, one of which offered a thoughtful, meaningful, and compelling perspective, and the other a kinda shallow, weaker character experience that still has some neat moments. I want to go over the broad strokes before diving into my deeper thoughts. Let's talk about it. Tales of the Jedi has a lot of neat aspects about it. The first thing that stuck out to me was just how beautiful the scenery is. While I still think the animation and movement is stiff like the rest of the 3D series, the vistas are just gorgeous. Almost like concept art brought to life. I found the music to also be enchanting. It's this somber, almost religious music at times which is not only fresh to hear in Star Wars, but it's majestic on its own. And it complements the next bit I like. I really enjoy how the Jedi Order is portrayed more like a busy yet quiet monastic religious order. Whereas the prequels made the Order feel very cold and unmagical. Whether that was intentional or not, like to prove that the Jedi have lost their way, I think the monastic tone was neat and refreshing here. I also notice a shift in direction. There are moments where Tales of the Jedi feels like it's a samurai film. There's something more methodical about the direction, especially during certain fights. It's kinda hard to put into words, but the way it's shot, with interesting camera angles, the slow buildup, the quiet time, the quick and short but intense action. It just doesn't feel like typical Star Wars action direction. Often those duels would be these loud, long, and sometimes drawn out spectacles. So I'm glad we're seeing something different and more modest. Now what I thought was also great was that it had something to say. Tales of the Jedi has moral ambiguity, and it touches on something topical and relevant to us. The sense of failing institutions, an all too relatable problem being felt around the world. Just as George Lucas was affected by the Vietnam War and the 90s and 2000s. This is something I desperately wished we got from the Clone Wars and the prequels more. I wanted to see the flaws in the universe. The tough, hard questions with no easy answers. While Tales of the Jedi doesn't retroactively solve that, it still holds up pretty well for what it is, with corruption and injustice complementing Dooku's fall pretty well. Your ideology, while faulty, does have its points. I'm surprised to hear that from a Jedi. Now before going into my deeper issues with the series, I do want to say that I wasn't a fan of the first episode being so... folk tale I mean, the first episode definitely feels like some legend that you would read about in a South Asian or East Asian folk tale. Someone uniquely connected to nature, understanding and making peace with the creatures, not that Star Wars can't have any stories that happen to feel like any folktale legend, but it just feels weird that Ahsoka gets this treatment. I guess I never saw Ahsoka as this prodigious character with a larger than life origin story. But aside from that, these shorts for the most part offer a lot when it comes to the presentation and the moral ambiguity. Now let's get into the deeper praises and criticisms. What's the point of the project? And how well does it execute its vision? These are fundamentally what matters in the end, and for the most part, it succeeds. So the core purpose of Tales of the Jedi is to offer two perspectives, one from Ahsoka and the other from Dooku. While Dooku's perspective shows his descent to the dark side through a series of first-hand accounts, seeing the corruption in the Republic, 
suffers the inaction and indifference from the Jedi Council to the suffering across the galaxy, while Ahsoka's storyline is all over the place. Baby Ahsoka connecting to the Force, training hard to overcome a scene in the Clone Wars, and then joining the Rebellion? I definitely think her shorts are the weaker link. I don't think her episodes say much about Ahsoka, her flaws, how she grows, and if she made any difficult choice. She doesn't seem torn or burdened with getting back into the fight. And she doesn't seem to be emotionally invested in this. She doesn't want to avenge the village. It seems like she's just doing this because it's the good thing to do. This is in contrast to Dooku's storyline. He's offered multiple times to step aside. I'm afraid our investigation is not yet complete. Let these injustices go and stay impartial. And yet, he chooses to take action. Actions that weigh on him heavily, internally and externally from his peers. Meaningful, consequential choices are one of the core aspects of gripping characters. And that's why I think Dooku's storyline makes Tales of the Jedi worth experiencing. His story shows the tragic downfall of a man guided by his empathy towards the downtrodden. He just can't abide by what he sees as a powerless being bullied by powers from within or tolerated by his own peers. I think most people would understand what he's going through. Now yes, there are issues with his storyline. I think the senator going full massacre mode needs more meat to those bones. Yes, we know that he wants his son back, but to gun down everyone, including the Jedi in his way, I think he needs more to be pushed to that conclusion. I feel like the senator could have been more desperate. Like, maybe he suffered many losses close to him in his life earlier. His wife, maybe he had other sons who tragically died. And so, at this point, he's been pushed to the corner to save his one and only surviving family member. I think because of that, it would have made the senator's decision far more understandable. At least more so than what we got. Next, I do find Dooku's actual fall to the dark side a bit too extreme towards the end, but I suppose that's more of an issue with Star Wars TM and the black and white nature of the morality. Having the personification of pure evil standing right there makes it hard to accept after the morally gray scenarios earlier. But hey, at least they tried and succeeded in showing a morally conflicted and torn up Dooku, losing faith in a Jedi Order. I heard that in pre-Disney canon, Dooku turned to Sidious because of Qui-Gon's death, here though, it's portrayed more as a disillusionment in his peers, with Qui-Gon's passing just confirming his disbelief in them. And I think given how the other masters said he was a political idealist in episode 2, He is a political idealist, not a murderer. I think that segues into episode 2 better. And personally, I find those political motivations more interesting and believable then turning to the dark side over the death of his Padawan. You serve the Senate. No, we serve the people of this Republic. Regardless, I think the writers portrayed Dooku's fall and inner torment pretty well. And it needs to be said that all of this is carried so powerfully by Dooku's voice actor, Corey Burton. I'm afraid. And so, let's get into my closing thoughts and scores. Nobody asked for the series. I am not someone who actively seeks out Star Wars Expanded Universe content. And I'm glad I gave the series a shot, because not only are they digestible, which means the weaker episodes don't eat up more time like the Clone Wars did for me, but some of the shorts are really, really good. I would give episodes 2, 3, and 5 4 stars. Because of the moral ambiguity given to Dooku in episode 2 and 3, 
and the directing in episode 5. Episode 4? Three stars. As it was still hard to see Dooku work with the literal devil in Star Wars, but still a decent episode. Episodes 1 and 6 though? Uh, two stars. I just think they didn't have much to say and came off like filler and were aimed at fans who wanted more from Ahsoka. Now being subjective and just using my gut feeling rather than averaging out the episodes, Tales of the Jedi earns a solid 4 out of 5 from me. Despite some weaker links, I was just so sucked in by the pointed and topical political commentary, by the moral ambiguity, by Dooku's downfall, and all the rest like the visuals, music, Jedi culture, and more. I think this short style format surprisingly works as a character driven story. And so, if they ever make a season 2, I hope the writers explore and show depth to the future perspectives, as they did with Dooku. I'm Sam Blips, and thanks for watching. I'm curious to hear what you think. I'm sure my thoughts on Ahsoka isn't widely shared, but let me know. You can also join my Discord if you want more of a discussion. With that said, I'd like to thank Nati and Farmer Dude for supporting me on Patreon. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate any support, whether liking the video, commenting on it, or subscribing, and if you can, support me on Patreon. You'll enjoy benefits, including being credited on my videos. I also have, again, a Discord, in case you also like to discuss Star Wars, games, or even share your own creative projects. I'm happy to give any feedback. Thanks and take care.